Hi, I'm Joy Baldridge, and I help the best to become even better. Better at increasing revenue and productivity while decreasing stress and frustration. Take a look. Her first speaking engagement, the White House, at age 19, and she got there by cold calling the President of the United States. <laughs> now, we have the absolute privilege of having um, what I think is one of the best speakers I've ever heard. Here to help us jumpstart our next 100 years of success, please join me in welcoming Joy Baldrige. Hi, I'm Joy Baldrige, and I'm here to bring a little more joy to your world. So when you think of stress, think of demands. And when you get too many demands put upon you, you start to get all stressed out. And then you can get burnt out, and then you get sick. Has that ever happened to you? You get burnt out, you get stressed out, then you get sick, and then you run out of sick days. <laughs> I saw a bumper sticker and it said, ran out of sick days, tomorrow I'm calling in dead. <laughs> this is just too much. And another one that said, I feel so much better now that I've given up hope. <laughs> you can't do that. Of course you can't. Churchill said, never, 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 never give up. I'm making your decisions easier because decisions come hard for me. I used to be indecisive, but now I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I got this when I was in the doctor's office getting my eyes examined. So they, the guy says the drill. You know the drill? Which is better? Which is better, one or two? Two better, one better? Which is better, A or B? And after a while, I started to get confused. <laughs> so I said, I don't know anymore. I can't take it. <laughs> And he said, good. And I said, why are you saying good? You know what he said? Because confusion is the step before clarity. <laughs> Do you love that? I made t-shirts. They're out there. Who loves that? Confusion is the step. Is anybody going to use that? You're going to use it. I got a t-shirt for you. On the t-shirt, it actually says... Confusion is the step before clarity. And I called him up because I always give credit to the people who give quotes out. And he, I said, I'm going to quote you in a seminar in Austin, and I'm going to make t-shirts with a quote you said. And he said, well, then I'll have to call my lawyer to find out the royalties. I said, whoa, gosh. I said, well, let me tell you the quote. I said, the quote was confusion is the step before clarity. And he said, I never said that. I said, well, I am the queen of finding good quotes when other people say them. I said, but as long as you're saying you definitely didn't say it, um, I gave him a little credit. I just put, confusion is a step before clarity by Joy Baldridge and her eye doctor. Because... <laughs> there you go. I said, Wilson, if you had only listened to me yesterday, and he clenched his fist with rage, and he said, Mom, it will never be yesterday, so why do you keep talking about it? <laughs> it will never be yesterday. So I thought, that's profound. I better write that one down. <laughs> So I didn't know because my son is my child and I thought he's five. They say cool things at five. I said to a client that afternoon, I said, tell me if this is just something that I think is cute because he's my son or if this will help you. And she, I said, my son said it will never be yesterday, so why do you keep talking about it? She thought a minute and said, Joy, that comment alone would have saved me 10 years of therapy. <laughs> So it will never be yesterday. You have to think, what are you going to do to further your success for tomorrow? You have to ask some questions. So those who ask the questions have the power. Those who prepare most win. So be prepared with the word really. Be prepared with the question. What's most important to you about? Why is that? Anything else? Really? And also, the third most critical golden nugget in helping 
with the customer always being right is that people are persuaded most by their own words. People are persuaded most by their own words. So listen to the words that they say and use those words in conversations with them so that they can relate to you, you build a stronger bond. Does that make sense? So those who prepare most win. Those who ask the questions have the power. And people are persuaded most by their own words. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't know what they want. You don't know what they need unless you ask. So questioning is key, and then you have to listen. We want to fix it. We get impatient. 446, what's your vision? And then I, I came up with three ways not to talk because I'm a talker. That's my profession. I'll tell you the three ways. You decide if you can do them or not. The first is to bite your tongue. And I literally bite my tongue. I was told that you can tell the, the, the signs of a good marriage by the number of bite marks on the tongue of the people in the marriage. So you bite your tongue. So bite your tongue in a place that you don't think anybody's going to see. Like, I can do it very naturally. Can you tell? I practice, because I can't go left, I can't go straight. i got to go right, or it looks peculiar. So see if you can find a spot to gently bite your tongue and turn to someone near you and see if you look peculiar. Go ahead. How are you looking? Don't speak. If you are place, you have to replace an old habit with a new habit. You can't just say, I'm not going to talk. That doesn't work. So instead, I bite my tongue, and I bite it all the time, especially when I'm at home. And I bite it with my kids. I have a 10-year-old and a 15-year-old. I just ask a question, and I bite my tongue. Really, I say. Tell me more. Oh, that's fascinating. Huh. Bite my tongue. Don't say anything. Works great. And then you learn so much more. So number one tip for not speaking, because you're asking questions, you don't want to answer your own question, is to bite your tongue. The second active listening idea is I call drink heavily. <laughs> what I mean by that is I have opportunities where I can actually drink water or tea when I'm with a client. And sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But I know when I'm drinking, I can't talk. So I'll ask a question, what's most important to you about? And then I take a sip. And then I'll say, and why is that? And I take another sip. And it's amazing how much money I've made drinking. It's incredible because I just ask the question and then I take a sip. And it prevents me from talking. So rule number one when you're active listening not to talk is to what? Bite your tongue. Rule number two, drink heavily. So rule number three is you jot a thought. People are persuaded most by their own words. So if you jot a thought down as to what they're saying and you write down the words that they're using, they like it when you take notes. They like it when you're precise. It's all in the vision. A vision of yourself, of your future. How are you going to end your year? What are you gearing up for for next year? Well, I leaned over to her and I just said, you know, this is great because this is the essence of our business.